Yo, yo, it's DigiBro coming at you from the house of best guy ever, a place where I finally feel like I can get work done compared to everywhere else that I've been on the road. And I haven't forgotten about you guys, $5 patrons who are patroning for the behind the scenes videos, which I've spent so long trying to decide what they would be that I haven't ended up <laughs> making any yet. Um, these were originally written posts that I did after every single um, video that I put out that was like a patron video. And then it became like a monthly thing where I was just doing like one video about the last five that I'd made. Then I changed the Patreon to be a monthly system. Let me make sure this is recording correctly. Yeah, then I switched Patreon to a monthly system. So like, it was like, well, I guess now I'll just do everything I put out or like whatever has an interesting story behind it. Um, and then I just went back to like, look, when was the last one I did? And I haven't done one since March. So you guys are too good to me. You got to call me out on my bullshit sometimes. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'm going to start by going through all the patron videos from like before I changed the Patreon. And then from there, I'll just go into like stuff that, um, that has interesting stories from the last few months. So starting with steps to building a better fan service anime. This is kind of something that's been like more or less in the pipes for a while just because I've always wanted to talk about like Kanokon and how um, like there's so much stuff about that show that I felt like made it excel above most of the harem genre. You know, not that it's like an amazing show, but that I was able to enjoy it enough to finish it and feel good about it afterwards that it was like, man, there's definitely something special here. I want to get to the heart of it. Um... And so I thought about just doing a video about Kanokon, but then I was like, really, it's it's not alone in the things it does well, and I'd rather talk in broader terms because it'd be more rela relatable to more people. Kanokon is a nine-year-old show that not everybody has seen, so, um, you know, I also wanted to talk about Seiko no Quasar, which I similarly feel, well, that one, I really love that show, even though it's like a you know, by all accounts, a really sleazy fan service show. So, like, you know, these were some things I'd, I'd, I'd been meaning to cover for a long time, and it was easy enough to make the video. A lot of my main channel content from the last few months has been, like, about making something easier to come up with just because I've been trying to do the four videos every month kind of thing, you know, where it was like, because it became where not just my paycheck, but also DeVue's paycheck was dependent on the videos. I felt like I had to get four out, which is why we've switched now to this monthly system. So this is not a concern anymore, you know, um, which I mean, I still ended up doing kind of the same thing this previous month, like with the main channel, whereas I was putting most of my focus on After Dark and all this other stuff that you guys are now paying for. But like um, from here on out, it's not going to be like that. Um, that was just because I had to get some videos written before I hit the road. But anyway, so the fan service thing was, you know, it was fairly easy to get my thoughts out in this very broad sense. And thankfully, I've seen so much fan service anime that, it, you know, I could compile those points pretty easily. Sorry if I don't go more in depth on these older videos that I should have probably covered a long time ago. Um, the difficulties of being right about anime kind of explains the background of the video in the process of the video, which is simply that, like, you know, me and Canapa had done this podcast talking about, like, the difficulties of being right about anime at times, where, like, I'm, you know talking about how hard it is to actually know for sure, like to fact check some something you've heard, some rumor you've heard, you know, and one of the comments has this, this really affirming anecdote about something I said in the podcast, but I went to go look for the source of it and it sent me down a rabbit hole, you know, and like it wasn't even that it's a particularly complex amount of research that I had to do, you know, I solved it within the same day that I had the problem, but I just wanted to show people like, you know, this is where, this is where most people stop, and this is where you stop if you want to at least try to be correct about it, and even then, you're, it's hard to say how correct you really are, you know, so this was basically me just converting a, like, a day that I had into a video, um, which was pretty fun, and once again, it was somewhat on the basis of being easy, because that's when I was about to take the trip to Atlanta, and, uh, DeVue had to finish editing both of those videos in the same night, like, he finished the fan service one, 
and then had to sp- like had about 24 hours left before we were going to leave on this trip maybe even less maybe it was 12 hours that he had before we were going to leave and so i gave him this other script and i was like this one should be really simple to edit it's only like 7 minutes long and it's mostly screen caps go for it and like i went to bed and woke up and he was finishing it up when i woke up so yeah really impressive turnaround on that video um Okay, next up was the Masamune-kun video. So with this, basically when me and Devu got back from Atlanta, um, I've been constantly in this mindset switching between, like, I want to dedicate myself to just doing big videos that nobody cares about and, like, relying on Patreon support and not trying to grow my audience or whatever, and... I want to do extremely mainstream videos and a ton of them and make the channel grow and stuff like that. I keep bouncing between these two extremes. Um, mostly, again, because of this whole keep Devu employed thing that I, that's like constantly running through my mind. So um, I had this idea when we got back from Atlanta where I thought, why don't I just watch the top 12 most popular shows from this season on my anime list and write analytical reviews of each of them? You know, like I can just marathon each show, write an analytical review, move on to the next one. And um, and that'll be a good way to guarantee that I've got videos coming out all the way through the next season. Because the winter season had just ended. So I thought, yeah, I'll have like a video every week throughout the spring season recounting all the winter season shows. Which are still relevant for at least a little while, you know. And, um, and I'll just do all of them in like in order of popularity or whatever. Uh... So I started with Masamune-kun, because that had been the most popular non-sequel show of winter. And, um, you know, I watched the show, and whatever thoughts I had about it, I put down on paper. I took extensive notes, and I'm going to show you guys... Um, I'm going to put down the, in the description links to my notes for... Let's see, which videos do I have notes for? Um, I've got the old-ass anime cast notes... The Scum's Wish notes and the Maid Dragon notes. Oh, I guess I don't have them for Masamune-kun. I probably forgot to photograph them, um, but I have photos of... Because this was where I got out a whiteboard. In fact, I think I have the whiteboard around here somewhere. Let me find it. So I bought this whiteboard at a like Harris Teeter grocery store. And um, this thing's amazing for taking notes because you can just scribble stuff down while watching the episode. And then when editing it... I can just scrub out each note, or when, when transcribing it to, uh, to, to, to the written word, you know, like, I just have all the notes written down, and then I can scrub out each one as I've covered it in the script. So that was really helpful, and that's how I did, um, like, the next three analytical review videos that I did. So yeah, I started with Masamune-kun, which I had seen the first episode at the start of the season and enjoyed it, so I expected to more or less enjoy the show, and, uh, and I did you know, in a sort of middling way. But I did think it had interesting ideas, and, like, so there were some people who kind of questioned, like, why bother making a video about this show that's relatively me- mediocre, and the reason is because it was really successful. And I think it's kind of inherently always interesting to look at a successful show, because even if it's not good, there must be something about it that grabbed people's attention. Like, like something like Attack on Titan, where, you know... um uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf just had a video like, why is Attack on Titan popular? Because it's like, it doesn't matter whether the show's good or not. What's interesting about it is that it's so fucking big, you know? And so with Masamune-kun, like, the premise is why this show succeeded, you know? And, and premise usually is. It, that's usually what brings these shows to, to get popular. Um, you know, not, this was, not that this was a massive success or anything, but like... It's very clear that the the strength of the premise is why the show has the level of success that it does. So, um, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about it and um, and then just kind of share my thoughts on how it went. But I'll admit this is n- probably not the most memorable video I've done in a while. So then I moved on to the next most popular show from the season, which was Scum's Wish. And I had no idea if I'd like or hate this show because people had been telling me that I would like it and stuff or recommending it to me and I I understand why but like yeah once again I just kind of watched the show took notes on my whiteboard here there will be a picture of my notes in the um in the description because I do have a photo of it right here which <laughs> you can you'll get to see it devolve like where 
basically I take notes from the top and bottom where at the top is all the like, you know, important stuff as I'm coming up with it. And then from the bottom, I'm just writing like, ah, stop. I hate this. You know, like all the like anger is just scribbled in <laughs> towards the bottom. Um, good luck reading my handwriting, by the way, even I, there, there are some notes in some of these videos that are so badly written that I just had to like skip that point. Like, I couldn't include it because I couldn't understand what the fuck my handwriting said. Or, like, I there was also one in the Scum's Wish video where I accidentally erased the wrong line that I just uh, copied. And I was like, oh, shit, I don't know what the fuck that said. Um, and then with the Maid Dragon notes, that's where I started, like, because I, um, I filled up my whiteboard and had to start over again. So I transcribed all the notes to notepad and then went, um, you know, like went in again. And even then there was some stuff that I couldn't understand. So I just had to leave it out, uh, as, as upsetting as that is. And I still have more notes for that, um, in the notepad because of the fact that I still haven't made the third video yet about that show. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, the Scum's Wish video, again, was pretty straightforward. I just wrote an analytical review, um, you know, I had t took notes while watching the show, passed it on to Davu, he watched the show, and he covered it. So then we get to Dragon Maid, and so the plan here was essentially the same. It's the next most popular, let's go through, let's take notes, let's make a video about it, except this one I ended up loving completely, and I was so in love with the show that I thought there's no way I could cover this in one video, and... You know, by this point, I'm no longer in the, okay, I want to do uh, 12 shows, you know, 12 shows, 12 videos, because once I had made Dragon, it was like, well, shit, fuck doing, um, you know, three more shows. Let's just do three videos about this show, because I love it so much. Um, so, yeah, I I took an insane amount of notes for Made Dragon, and uh, it basically... When I was going over the notes, it broke down into, like, themes and characters, and then animation and presentation. Like, so it felt like I, you know, could cover each of those separately. So that's why the, the two videos that have come out are all about themes and characters. And I had so many notes about Kobayashi herself that the entire first video is just about how great Kobayashi is. And the second video kind of tackles the rest of the characters. So the third video that I have planned would be just about animation and presentation. And I, like, I didn't have quite enough notes that it makes, like, a cohesive point other than that the show looks really good and like I want to fanboy over like just the best moments um but like I figured it would be better if I rewatch the show and like find more of a through line to talk about and find like um moments that I could break down in depth and stuff like that you know like really get into the bones of why the animation and presentation is so good which my notes don't go far enough into that uh, as they are, which is why I haven't made that video. I'm going to rewatch the show before I make that video. Um, and I have no idea when that'll happen because I don't really consider it a pressing concern or anything. Um, you know, I, I got out the most important stuff, the like, here's why the show is good stuff, you know. Um, the rest of it's more like uh, extra. So, all right, that's the last video of the pre monthly era. So, from here on out, the idea of like a video that's main channel or like main content, something that's patroned individually completely disappears. So now it's like, uh, what are the videos that are important and interesting and worth talking about? Well, we'll find out by me going through, I'm just opening up all my weekly roundup posts so I can go through and like whichever ones have interesting stories. I'll share the backstories, which, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you guys probably already know the backstory, either because you were witness to it, or, um, or just it, uh, it's obvious, you know, but, okay. So the first big thing that I did this past month was, I wrote this light novel in like a week, it sucks and I hate it, but if it gets an anime adaptation, I'll pretend it was a work of genius. Actually, it should be a day, but for some reason I wrote a week in the Patreon, uh, post, Wrote this light novel in like a day. Um, yeah, this was entirely just the Era Manga Sensei podcast was going on, and uh, the characters kept writing light novels in like a day. So I said on one episode, I'm going to do that, and then I did it. And 
I, I don't know, like, I'm glad I did it, and it had lots of interesting feedback. People were a lot more into it than I expected. It got way more views than I expected. Um, I mean, I don't think many people have listened past the first hour, understandably, because the first hour is all, like, goofy, fun stuff, and the audiobook, like, the first hour is all cut together really fast, and then after that, I stopped cutting it together fast because it had to come out, like, in a couple hours. I didn't have time to edit the whole thing. So the second two hours, like, really slows down and becomes much more meta and, like, well, more meta in the sense that it's, like, literally about me. And I'm, like, reading stuff out of old notebooks and shit, you know? So, like, it changes considerably then. But it really was just a stream of consciousness for, like, you know, all the time that I was working on it. Um, which was in between also putting together this album called Emotional Anime Raps. So, like, on the one hand, it was an insane thing to do that that had a lot of payoff but it also was like the worst possible timing because like you know ben and devu were leaving the house i was trying to figure out where i'm going and because i didn't stock up like work at the start of the month because i was too busy working on that book the very end of the month once i did leave um and took like a vacation basically nothing came out you know for that week and i don't have like not just that nothing came out for that week, that would be fine because, you know, I put out so much at the start of the month that nobody's going to blame me for taking a week-long break at the end, but it also means I didn't stock up stuff for next month, you know, so, like, now this this month, June, is going to be, like, running around trying to come up with ideas as fast as possible, which, thankfully, is what I'm good at anyways. I've been feeling a lot more... um ready here now that I'm at Nate's house because he's much more of a work all the time kind of guy you know as opposed to the more vacation atmosphere I've had the last two places I've been staying but yeah that's the story of the light novel um you know I made a whole video about it so you guys probably understand emotional anime raps I also made a whole video about uh it was just kind of like something I'd wanted to do for a really long time and I'd been compiling rap like uh anime songs that i wanted to rap over and like so a lot of these are songs i've been planning to do it over for a very very long time and it was basically just that i got really into rapping you know i'm, I'm like well i have been really into rapping and i haven't been getting enough new beats from the people who uh have been making me beats so it was like i'm gonna go make another project you know just to like uh, get out some of this stuff that I'm trying to get out, especially because I was at such a complicated moment in my life that, like, there's a lot to say in raps, you know, there's a lot to communicate when I'm feeling so strongly uh, about my current state of being. So, all right, next I'll talk about the old-ass anime cast in full because it's been going since the last time I made one of these behind-the-scenes videos, and, um, it's kind of interesting the way this process worked, and this is something I'd really like to do more of because I had a lot of fun putting this together, and it the result of it has been really interesting because it was all recorded in the span of a week. So it was leading up to my trip to Atlanta. Um, I had like a bunch of like time to put together a project, and I thought like I'll make a podcast that will come out by itself every week. Uh, throughout the spring season so it'll be like I have my own spring season anime you know that's coming out uh, each week so that was the plan and I wrote out all the all the ideas I had on a uh, on the whiteboard which you can see there's a there should be a picture of it in the description it says Haruhi Suzumiya, Gunslinger Girl, Boogie Pop and Others, Welcome to the NHK, Eureka 7, Dot Hack, Arjuna, Otaku no Video, Hidamari Sketch, Baka no Shiki, Evangelion, and episode one, Manabi Straight, because I'd already uh, done that one. So, these, uh, like, some of these aren't actually going to happen, you know, some of these are, are more like, like, I think Eureka 7 and Arjuna both get slammed into a, um, into, like, a conclusion episode, where, like, I just, like, round up a bunch of smaller stuff, and I know I add in an Adult Swim episode, like, just talking about the history of Adult Swim and stuff like that, so there's definitely some stuff that gets shifted around, Shiki does not end up getting a video, um, Bakano becomes a light novel one, which I, which is the next episode, um, that's gonna come out on Sunday, so yeah, there's some shifting there, but, uh, 
but yeah, th- th- that was the idea. I just like wrote out all these shows that like I remember having stuff to say about in the past, but it's been so long that I'm worried I won't have the same things to say anymore. And this was kind of like a huge weight off of my shoulder thing where like I have this I mean, I kind of explained this at the start of the first episode of the old ass anime cast, but I have this problem where like I look at a show like Manabi Straight and I remember having all these deep thoughts about it and what I'm concerned about is that I'll watch the show and not feel as strongly about those things and like I won't want to write a video about those things because I'll be looking at the show from a different perspective. So instead of re-watching the show and letting it cloud my judgment, I'll just talk about my old thoughts, get them out into the world, and then I can move on and uh, you know later talk about the show again. And I mean, if I watch it and I feel the exact same, maybe I'll make an analysis video with a tighter version of these points from the old ass anime cast, but you know, it's still a good way to get my thoughts about, out about all these older shows. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and the fact that it comes out automatically, like I still have to edit some of them. Um, like I had edited the first like five or six at the very beginning, and then I've been like playing catch up with myself. So now I'm at the stage where like I have to edit them right before they come out and stuff. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it's been really nice having like content that. I made like a while back and so even if I don't put out anything for a whole week you know old ass anime cast is gonna come out and um, I'd like to have more of that I'd like to have a bunch of like uh, podcasts that just release by themselves um, you know so that uh so that I can take week-long breaks every now and then um, then there's the insufferable social media argument podcast which also started up in the last couple of months this one is a show I'm doing with Mumkey simply because I got way into podcasting right around the time of the old ass anime cast. Like, I, I I feel like I'm really good at it. Like, just I've gotten so good at talking unscripted from all these years of doing the pub crawl and uh, Digi Bros, which I love Digi Bros. And that show was kind of not really happening as much for a little while because Victor moved out and, uh, you know. Just basically, I wanted to have more of a high-concept show, like something that has a definitive idea behind it and could be done every week, and there's not a lot of people I could do like a weekly show with. Like, me and Endless Jess have great chemistry on podcasts together, and we've done some great podcasts, but like, he's really hard to organize, you know? And Ben Saint, who I, I think I have great chemistry with and lived with me, but really hard to organize... So the only guys I know who, like, I know can keep to a consistent weekly schedule are Best Guy Ever, Monkey Jones, and Hippocrit. Like, I know they can do it for long term. Um, Monkey plans his videos way in advance. He usually has, like, months of pre-planned videos that he's working on. So, like, he's extremely reliable for this. And, in fact, he's the one who keeps me. He's the one who comes to me and reminds me that the show is going to happen, you know. So, like, I just wanted to have a show with him. And at first, I was going to have, like, a show where we, like, take stories of someone who's thinking about committing suicide and we argue whether they should or shouldn't or something like that. Or, like, I wanted it to be suicide-themed because I felt like that's something that he and I both have interest in, um, which is what which is what later became the slow-motion suicide segment of the show. Um, but then uh, I had the idea of making a show called Insufferable Social Media Argument and, like... Um, the main inspiration for this for this uh, idea that me and Monkey should have a podcast, besides the fact that he works way ahead of himself, is a random live stream we did, which I believe is still up on Monkey Jones 2, where he just invited me to a drunken live stream where we were recommending anime, and it would just be we'd pick any random thing that came to mind and be like, oh yeah, I recommend the anime Lucky Charms. It's a delicious anime. It, it, and we'd just like go on for like five, ten minutes about this anime that we were recommending. All while, you know, like never breaking character, never breaking this like this weird, hazy bullshit idea. And it was so much fun doing that that I was like, we need a show like this where like, none of it is serious in the slightest. It's, like, just all bullshit. And, um, and you know, what better way to do that than to, like, have a show where we're, like, insisting that we're taking these topics very seriously uh, while clearly not. 
Um, then there's Aeromanga Sensei every week. So this is yet again, I'm thinking, I want to do more weekly shows. Who can I do it with? Best guy ever is perfect. Um, and I wanted to get him in more stuff, which he's now done Mia Mafava, which is like really opened up this idea of best guy ever as like an internet personality. Um, you know, cause he's been on the PCP all this time, but PCP is like six or seven people, uh, like in, in, in one episode sometimes, you know, so like 10 people in total, it's hard to like have a standout presence there. So like, I wanted to bring him in and just be like, let's just do a podcast with the two of us talking about anime and like, you know, draw more attention to him. And then also give me an excuse to talk about a currently running show like week by week. And I thought, let's just take a show that I know is going to be popular. That seems totally innocuous. And I picked Aeromanga Sensei, which like, I didn't expect to end up ripping on it as hard as we do. Like, I didn't think it would be that bad. Um, but yeah, it's been a hell of a lot of fun doing the Aeromanga Sensei podcast. That's been like <laughs> one of the most fun things. Um, okay, that's all the stuff in the first weekly roundup that I really want to talk about. Let's look at the second one. Okay, uh, yeah, the first, like, main channel video of the month was How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Skip Akashic Records. So this one was, uh, as we've been moving into this monthly system, I had this idea that I would start making, like, smaller videos th for the main channel that, like, that either I'd pay Devu to edit, but they'd be, like, you know, like more minor stuff and I'd give him like a ton of them or just stuff I could edit myself. So, um, one of the first ideas I had was because I had clicked on the Akashic Records mal page and looked at it and just had this like mind blow experience where I was like, oh my God, this is like everything I don't want out of a show. You know, like I thought it was really funny that like it's placement in the chart and everything that it said about it on the page was exactly the same as the experience of clicking on asterisk war, uh, you know, back in late 2015. So I thought, man, I could make a video just making fun of this mal page. But then I realized that that's almost exactly how the asterisk war videos start out. You know, it starts off with me looking at the mal, looking at the picture and breaking it down and all that stuff. So, like, I still thought that would be funny, but it would be kind of redundant. So then I thought, what if I expanded that out to, like, make a point about how I don't need to try this show to know I won't like it? You know, like, even if it's not bad, there's reasons not to try. Like, it, you don't have to watch every anime, you know? And, like, just, of course there's going to be stuff you don't like. Of course there's going to be stuff that others like that you don't like. All of that makes sense. And there's almost no shows that nobody likes, you know, as well as none that everybody likes. So I just thought it'd be fun to make that into a, a quick video. And Devu went really uh, ham on the editing for this one because he and I have been doing these commentaries and I don't think this one is out yet. It's either, it either just did come out at the end of May or it's the next one that's going to come out. But in the commentary where we watch, it, it must be the next one, we watched the What is Anime and What Isn't video, which was one of the uh, early ones that Devu did for me, and it's one that I had, like, told him, like, this is, it was, like, his first big deal video, like, the first one where I was, like, this is gonna be a big, successful video, and I want you to give it your all, and as we were breaking it down, we took a whole hour breaking down that video. It's only like seven minutes long. And we spent a whole hour breaking it down because he had put so much detailed effort into it. Like there was just so many crazy edits that he had done. And so watching that back made him like angry at himself that he'd kind of gotten lazy over time or like, you know, started streamlining his process and not really doing lots of fancy stuff. So when I gave him the Akashic Records video, he really took it as like, I'm going to challenge myself and go all out on this and make it like the, the most like ridiculous, um, expensive looking video I can. And he did a great job. So yeah, I'm pretty satisfied about that. Um, some hard thinking after 10 years of anime blogging. So I kind of explained what the deal is with this in the video, but, um, so back in, what was it? 2010 or something. Um, Ghost Lightning, who was like my mentor and used to be my favorite anime blog back in the day. He had made a vid, a, a post called some hard thinking after three years of anime blogging. And it's like, the format is exactly the same. I copied a lot of it, like sentence for sentence in the way that the video is structured. Um, but he says like, you know, these are, I must've come to certain conclusions after doing this for as long as I have. Here are the three hottest girls to be, uh, animated or illustrated in the last three years. 
Um, and then he lists his top three. And I always loved that as an anniversary post because making a like 10 hottest anime girls is so like lame and everyone will give you shit for it. But it's also something that you totally want to do, you know, or at least I do. Like I've always wanted to have a top 10 hottest anime girls video, but how do I present it in a way that makes it look like it's self-indulgent instead of like audience indulgent? Because most people are going to think I'm doing it for the clicks, you know, and I'm not, I'm doing it for me because I think it would be funny. So I think he found the perfect way to do that by making it a blog celebration thing, you know, like this is the biggest possible deal <laughs> in a way. Like, so I copied it once for my fifth anniversary, but I did it weirdly because I did the, like, here are the three hottest of the last five years, which didn't make any sense. I don't know why I structured it that way. I guess because I just couldn't come up with enough that I thought that I felt like strongly about, but that list had been... Um, Kagami, C2, and uh, Kanbaru. So they're all still on the top 10, but those were the three from that list. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I was coming up on 10 years. I was like, I gotta do something for my 10th anniversary. I gotta do this in video form. It'll be hilarious. Now, unfortunately, um, I didn't think I'd have time to give this to Davu to edit uh, because he wouldn't have seen all the shows. He wouldn't be able to pick out moments that I thought were hot, you know, like I wanted it to be my personal, here's the moments of this character that I think are, that make them sexy. But then it was getting really down to the wire. Like I didn't end up editing this until like the night before. And, uh, I didn't have a lot of the shows on me, and this was right after Nya went down, and Baka BT went private, and I couldn't remember my password for Baka BT, and like, it was just hard to find torrents and stuff. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm using GIFs. So I go and just like, Google each character in GIF, and like, find as many GIFs, GIFs, whatever you want to call them, as I can, and, uh, yeah, so that's why the video looks like total ass, <laughs> because I just compiled a bunch of fucking animated GIFs and GIFs and, like, WebMs and whatever I could find, essentially, which, like, was not easy. You know, I'm going to, like, image boards and shit, just trying to scrounge together enough for this video. Um, could have been done better, but, you know, it's a kind of a joke video anyways. It's mostly about the the idea that, hey, it's been 10 years since I started anime blogging. Um, so we've got a bunch of vlogs. I don't think there's any like interesting stories behind these. Um, most of them kind of explain the point in them. Like this whole greatest of all time th rabbit hole I went down was pretty much all inspired by Kendrick Lamar's new album coming out and the conversation about whether or not he's the greatest of all time, as I explained in those videos. Um, we brought back Digibros uh, in a kind of a big way. We finally have the Dark Souls 3 DLC going on just because it happened to come out. I don't know why Victor hasn't edited the next bunch of videos. I don't know if he doesn't realize I sent him the files. <laughs> um, yeah, just most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, okay, what's the next week? The Plebe and the Weeb finally came out. Yeah, so you guys probably know... I mean, if you're part of the Kickstarter for that, then you'll know the story of what was going on with the Plebe and the Weeb, or if you follow me in Endless Jess, like, we did a whole Kickstarter for it late last year, um, flew everybody out in January and recorded it, it's ten episodes that we recorded that are each, like, an hour long, and, uh, and then Jesse goes back home and his house is completely flooded. So, like, he basically spent the next couple of months just trying to deal with the flood and with getting sick from the flood and just all kinds of shit, like, rebuilding his life, um, and he did not have time to start editing this video. And this was also while trying to put out enough content on his own channel to, like, keep him afloat because the Plebe and the Weeb episodes were such a big editing project that he couldn't do it in, like, a timely fashion and try to get videos out to, you know, sustain himself since he lives off of his Patreon. So yeah, it took a long time, but he finally got it out, and it's fucking great. It's everything I hoped it would be. And then there's the Kimono Friends video, and like, this is funny, because I had other plans for a Kimono Friends video. Um, back when I was, like, right after the Maid Dragon video, I decided to watch Kimono Friends next, and um, I watched the first episode while I was, like, delirious. Like, I was weirdly tired, or like, I don't know, I felt strange, 
And so, and the episode felt like an out-of-body experience. So I recorded just, like, random unscripted thoughts I had afterwards into a microphone. And I was going to make it, like, a Digi Goes on Safari series where, like, I'd just compile my, like, afterthought notes after each episode. But I listened to it back and it sounded really bad. Like, I was so out of it and tired that that it was hard to listen to. And, um... I figured I'd give the show more of a shot before I started presenting it as, like, this super weird thing that I'm watching, which it didn't really turn out to be. Like, by the end of episode two, it kind of becomes a normal adventure show that makes a lot more sense. Um, But yeah, I was laying around. I told this story in the video about the script, like, how the script came together, that I was my room smelled like cat piss, and I thought of the idea of a light novel called I Love My Furry Girlfriend but but I Can't Get It Up Because My Room Reeks of Cat Piss or something like that. And then it got me thinking about like sapience in a human-animal hybrid and that got me thinking about Kimono Friends. And then I watched the video with that in or watched the show with that in mind and came away with this video. Um, And, you know, because my point was kind of short Um, I figured I'd also make it a review of the show, since it's a kind of contentious show that not a lot of people in the West have watched. It's much more popular in Japan. Um, So I figured I'd, you know, also present the idea that this show is good while also talking about this interesting aspect of it. Um, So yeah, then there's the editing my writing video that came out of that as well. So then we've got why I dropped every anime. I dropped a series of videos that came about literally because somebody tweeted at me that I should do that, and I thought that's a great idea. So I did it. Um, it felt like making a list, which is why it was fun for me. Cause you know, I love lists. Finally, moving on to the last batch of stuff I've got here. Um, there was the in defense of vanilla vlog, which can seemingly confused a lot of people as to where it came from. It came from people complaining about vanilla like it happens all the time. You know, like I'm a vanilla guy. So, uh, so I, people, bitch at me every time I order vanilla (laughs) and they're always making like oh you vanilla Mm, boring you know and it was kind of like a combination of I had what was the first one that happened like I think I first started thinking about it when I was ordering a coffee somewhere and realizing that like the there was like one vanilla option buried deep in the menu it was probably at Wawa because they have touchscreen menus and I was like huh vanilla is kind of like an odd you know, flavor for coffee, whereas you got like a thousand different variations of chocolate. And then um, I was on Stealing Your Dad's As If It Was Easy, the show that I do with Munchie, where we eat fast food and uh, talk about it. And uh, we had gone to Hardee's, aka Carl's Jr., and we were supposed to order a chocolate shake, but I got the vanilla shake because I don't like chocolate. And they they were giving me guff about it, and that's when I had, like, I say in there, like, I'm going to make a video about vanilla. So if you watch that podcast, you know this was coming. Um, And then what finally reminded me of it is that I was hanging out with my girlfriend, and we were going to get ice cream. And I was like, yeah, I pretty much only eat vanilla because she, she was like a big ice cream fan. She didn't even give me shit about it per se. I just kind of like then presented my argument that I'd already had this podcast or this uh, vlog idea. And she was like, yeah, that sounds like a good vlog. And I was like, cool, I'm going to make it. So uh, yeah, that's why that happened. Then how much do anime visuals matter? The last video of the month, and this one was pretty much like just about getting something easy done while I was on vacation. You know, like I had to get one last video done for the month and uh, for for Devu's sake. And um, I was out of town. So it was like, what can I talk about really like fast and, uh, and easy? And I'd been thinking about this... I mean, I've thought about this for a long time, and I kind of presented this idea in the What is the Appeal of Anime video, where I said that, like, the appeal of anime is that it presents these types of stories that no one else is presenting, you know? Nowhere else do you get 500 episodes of guys fighting in space, like DBZ, you know? Nowhere else do you get um, these quiet contemplative stories like Mushishi or these other things. So I'm kind of re- representing that same idea, but like speaking to hardcore anime fans instead of speaking to people who don't know what the appeal of anime is. Um, and mostly from this visual standpoint where it's like visuals are not the only thing that's unique to anime, you know, or that like that anime can uniquely do well. It can also uniquely 
uh, you know, tell stories with a certain pacing and at a certain length, and it has certain characteristics that you just come to appreciate almost uh, without thinking about it. Like you take for granted certain things about the the structure of it that maybe aren't as obvious as the visuals. And I'll probably end up doing a podcast about this with Josh Dunham of Wave Motion Canon because he's a huge, like, visuals are the most important thing kind of guy. And, um, you know, after watching the video, he was interested in the possibility of podcasting about it, which I am too, because there's definitely a lot more to be said about it than the five minutes that I had in this video. Um, but yeah, I wrote and recorded it pretty quickly in a hotel room, which is why the audio is weird in that video. Like, if you can tell if I sound, like, weird and kind of uh, different, it's because I was recording it in a hotel room. Um, but then, yeah, I sent that along to Davu, and he did a phenomenal job on the editing in that video. Like, I think that's one of his strongest edits ever. It's just so clean, and it feels so good to watch. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. All the other stuff I put out in the last two months is pretty self-explanatory so i don't think any of it needs a behind the scenes uh on how it got made hopefully that's satisfactory this is a long ass video <laughs> but it's making up for a lot of lost time and i might do one of these more frequently than once a month i don't know if once a month is the best way if you guys just like it because it's, i know a lot of people like the super long videos and stuff but um you know, maybe I could do it along with the weekly roundups or something like that if it seems appropriate. We'll see. That's all for now, and I'll catch you in the next one.